Well, welcome to my Pocket Rocket Review. Wanna see how I got it? Keep watching. Well, Rich here, and today I've got a review of a Pocket Rocket. No, literally, the name of this thing from ZD Racing is the Rocket, or the Rocket DTK 16, to give it its full name. This is the brushless version. It's four-wheel drive, 2.4 gigahertz radio, completely ready to run, 7.4 volt, 1500 milliamp battery, I believe, included with it. The brush version does 40 kilometers an hour, so it claims on the outside of the box. The brushless version, which is in this box, does a claimed 55 kilometers an hour, or a very impressive 34 miles an hour. And if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know I like reviewing the sub $100 buggies and with the current state of world affairs, not everyone out there has got $800, dollars go and spend on a new 8S X Max at this point in time. Hope that makes sense. So this fits within the ethos of that sub $100 buggy mark because it's just $99.99 from Banggood. It's available in green like the one inside this box and available in red as well. As I say, completely ready to run. I'm gonna be doing a full runtime test of it later on in this video. So we're gonna see just how quick it is and how much duration we get out of the battery. And then later on in the week, I'm gonna be putting the GPS on board and we're gonna do a full on speed test with it. Anyway, let me get the camera down and let's unbox the DTK 16 from ZD Racing. And Tom Lee RC, another Brit, did a very nice review of this the other day when he commented, just as I'm going to do on it, says, just charge the batteries and go. But when you open the box, which just seem very small in relation to the size of the car, you will find when you take the instruction manual out and the charger, I'll have a look at that in just a second, that the car needs to have the wheels put on it. So you can't quite just put the batteries in and go. But let's get it out of the box, see what we get for our money. Well, there we are. Before I dive on into the car or even the transmitter, the first thing I'm going to say is a lot of the cars coming out in the Far East at the minute have got USB chargers and it is nice for once to see. What we have obviously got is a full on mains powered charger on it, which is a slight break from the norm in the RC cars coming out of the Far East at the minute. But that's good to see as fingers crossed that should charge quite a bit quicker than with a USB charger. We have what looks like a spare battery cover in there. Mini toolkit underneath there, spare body clips, say charging leads, two ziplock ties, some double sided tape, and the all important instruction manual, which I shall have a read before we run it. Batteries, and once it says it's ready to run, you do need two AA batteries that go in the bottom of the transmitter, so more on that in a second. On the transmitter, I do notice it's maybe got three channels here because you've got a little auxiliary button on there throttle, brake, reverse steering on there our antenna on the top you can reverse the steering you've got steering trim and speed dual rate on there on off switch on there so we've got two batteries in that but in the meantime let's get the wheels on the car and we have 12 millimeter wheel hexes which gives you a uh, wide range of options should you want to change the tires however these don't feel plasticky these feel quite decent rubbery grip to them if you know what I mean on some of these cheaper cars by that plastic you feel these feel like they've got a reasonable level of grip on them and like Tom the RC commented on this packaging the tires separately being able to fit it in that much smaller box is quite neat and it shows attention to detail if the car is well packaged then somebody's put thought in to how it goes together time to quickly put the tires on to get this foam off you've really got to undo every nut but no big issue because I need to undo them all to get the wheels on Okay, wheels on, let me get the camera down, let's have a tour around the car, then open that body back. Just remember guys, if you like what you see today, don't forget to subscribe. Well, the Rocket from ZD Racing has that sort of mini desert buggy feel to it. Four wheel drive, fully independent suspension, all round. I can see aluminum cat dampers on there. Now the shocks aren't adjustable, uh, there are no preloaded spaces included with the kit and they are not threaded on there, but bear in mind the price point of this car. As I say, super grippy tyres on here. It is sitting slightly lower towards the back. I'm guessing that is because of the weight of this wheel on here. And I would think either removing that wheel or keeping it on is going to have a considerable effect on the handling of the car, be it for the good or the bad. You can see, and you can see some scale features built on there, 
with the uh, mini twin fans at the back and we've got our little scale co-driver figure and driver figure in there as well the one thing I would say when I lifted it up and did that drop test just now is it's got a decent size weight to it I'm thinking that's probably a couple of pounds on that and one thing I'm liking from the outset is we have just got two body clips on here and a hinge at the back and that means you're going to, when we get to look at the inside you're just going to be able to take, remove those two pins and pull the cover back anyway let's have a quick look at the underside oh we've got a nice impact bumper at the front there now the A-arms actually look quite substantial on that as I said a plastic has it's a very good feel to the plastic on the car smooth underside tray down there and again fairly solid looking A-arms at the back of the car now that spare wheel is going to act as your rear bumper in the event of a crash and speaking of suspension travel let's lift the front wheel until the rear just comes off the ground that's not bad we're up to the inch mark oh inch and a half that's coming up on two inches of travel on there that is not bad at all in fact that's quite impressive for a car this size check the rear the, typically there is slightly less travel at the rear let's lift that wheel again until the front wheel just begins to come clear of the ground inch at the rear so far and yet yeah, about an inch and a half of travel at the rear it does not feel too badly damped it's quite well sprung but it's reasonably well damped as well because a lot of these smaller cheaper cars just want and will spring down and they bounce back up like a rocket because they've got next to no damping but that's not bad at all let's have a look at the inside and if i made the right to call which i have let just hinge us back give you full access to the inside of the car absolutely outstanding design at this price and one other feature i notice is this little wire that i had not spotted to start with because that comes and leads straight to this full length LED light bar on the top which I did not realise that it came with so I'm looking to look at this from the outset and we look to have quite a substantial roll cage on it it's even down on the sides of the car as well as on the top on there see the little drivers in a bit more detail in there anyway let's check the inside of the car let's start at the front and pan on back our impact bumper on there well, that's quite rigid as opposed to super soft on there but it feels like it's still going to take a fairly good knock on there as i said uh, aluminum capped shocks on there no adjustability on them but bear in mind the price point of this car as i said the plastic has a good quality feel to it moving back we've got our combined esc and receiver on it 30 amp esc interesting to know if you want to upgrade this it's got a three wire servo a lot of the cars out of the far east have a five wire servo so if you want to upgrade the cars you end up having to change the servo as well as the esc and receiver but this means that if you want to fit a beefier esc on there and a separate receiver you've not got to worry about getting a new servo which is great news our brushless 33,000 kv motor on there and straight away i am noticing the engine mount on there that is quite a substantial engine mount a lot of these just have that cheap folded piece of metal on that but that's in a different lake altogether which is a good sign from the outset our steering servo tucked away down here and moving around to this side we can see the esc and the battery i've got dean's connector on there that is up here what appears to be a 2s lipo 1500 milliamps as i said from the outset just note how that battery lead isn't just flopping around on there it's actually clipped in on that the side on there to stop it flopping around on the inside of the car neat feature and to confirm it does come with a 2s 1500 milliamp 15c lipo so I'm going to get this on charge and then we'll take the thing outside for a quick test drive. Well, there we are. Light bar on, lights off. That throws out a fairly decent amount of light. Is that enough to drive by at high speed? I would say possibly not, but it's certainly enough to be driving around in the dust, keeping a good eye on where the car is. Well, I've been playing around with this off camera and I'll tell you now from the very start. This is going to be one fun little buggy. Oh, a hint of a wheelie there. This has got a brisk acceleration to say the least on here. This is ideal for around this yard. See those tires scrabbling for grip. Yeah, as I said, they are pretty grippy. And you can corner with the thing on full throttle if you want. Now battery life, I'm thinking that 1500 milliamp pack's probably gonna be good for a good 15, 20 minutes at even at this pace on there. Cause the car maybe weighs a couple of pounds. Oh, wheelie there. So it has got plenty of power on there. Now, while well, you might get it to wheelie, 
It's not necessarily wanting to wheel it all the time, but you've obviously got the weight of that spare tyre on the back there. But I'm thinking, on pretty much any surface, this thing is going to be an absolute hoot to drive. Now, is that 55 kilometres an hour? I don't think it is on it without the optional gearing. Anyway, let's see it handled some grass. Oh, and a jump. Okay, so how is it on grass? Oh, wanting a wheel a bit more on grass there. Full throttle. And, what does anybody notice? Anybody spot it? It's not getting kicked around at all. So those dampers have actually definitely got some oil in them. Well, I can tell you from the outset, it's performance over grass is probably one of the best of any small cars, certainly in that sub hundred dollar price point that I have tested on it. It's just not getting kicked around at all. Any steering changes in steering that you're seeing there is down to yours truly. The car is just not getting thrown around at all, which means the damping on it is as good as I thought it was going to be inside. And it's got a decent turn of acceleration on the grass with a larger diameter tyres, obviously helping and full on acceleration on grass. See, that's just not getting kicked around at all. Very, very, very impressive. I have to say, I was not expecting it to be as good on grass as it is. Well, and there's that little jump without any worry at all. And very, very predictable on a steering. The one thing I would say is you could drive this, like you could give this to someone that's never driven an RC car before, and they could drive it around at stupid fast speeds. The acceleration is pretty darn brisk in this driveway. And the steering, fresh out of the box. It's very, very good indeed. You can have a great deal of fun with this. And while I've turned it over a couple of times, you're gonna have to be trying fairly hard to do something stupid to actually turn it over. But certainly on blacktop, the thing is that it's like a slot car. And you can corner on full throttle without any issues. A Little bit of lift in the front wheel there at speed. Well, anyway, I'm gonna speed test it later on this week, pin it with a stock pinion and the optional pinion fit to it. But stuck out of the box, this thing lives up to its name. It is an absolute rocket. Certainly more than enough pace for around my yard. As I say, we'll put a link to it below the video. I think if we put the optional pinion on and this thing hits that 55 kilometers an hour, this is an awful lot of car for the money. And, and I will say, without any shadow of a doubt, over grass, this is the best handling sub $100 buggy I have tested. That thing under full throttle was not getting kicked around at all. Anyway, hope you liked this video. If you did, then don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Well, thumbs up if you like this video, guys. Post any comments you might have in the comment section below the video, and hit the circle below to subscribe. And if you do hit the circle, don't forget to hit the bell.